Ahoy hoy, and welcome to Harsh Critique, where I look at articles sent in by various fans of the channel who want me to, let's just say, critique their articles. Necessary preface, because people will think that being a dick is acceptable behavior in a general sense. This is mostly for entertainment value and also to help out the person whose article needs critiquing. Uh, you should not give critique like this. This is me allowing myself to be incredibly frustrated, just thinking about fat past episodes. Letting myself be incredibly frustrated by the <laughs> obvious dumb errors that people have. <laughs> Don't act like this unless, like, there's a specific, very narrow area where this kind of behavior is acceptable. And it's when someone literally knows exactly what you're going to do such as they've seen episodes of Harsh Critique before, and they ask for more. Today's draft was sent in by Imra Kin. Oh boy. I gotta admit the special containment procedures are not so bad for this. Item number SCP-XXXX, object class Euclid, special containment procedures. SCP-XXXX is held in an average humanoid containment cell with a noose hung from the ceiling in the center of the room for the comfort of the entity a, a, a standard humanoid containment cell not average i'm imagining i don't know why there's a noose in the center of the room but okay i assume that's explained later <laughs> in the event of an alleg uh, alligator event uh. MTF teams are to secure SCP-XXX's containment cell and monitor the entity until the incident has subsided. The occurrence of Alagata events, or I'm sorry, incidents, has shown no pattern and no means of preventing or terminating incidents in progress have been found. We're going to stop for just one second here. Now, oftentimes, and I do this too, I, hell, I do it a lot in spoken speech, spoken speech. That's a thing. But um, this is one sentence, supposedly one thought. The occurrence of Algata events has shown no pattern. That's one complete thought. And no means of preventing or terminating incidents in progress has been found. Technically, that's at best two sentences. You could probably make it into three sentences and still be okay. But regardless, it definitely needed to be split down the center at least. SCP-XXXX itself has shown no interest in leaving Foundation custody, but the nature of its effects, maybe, that seems weird, nature of its effects, mean it cannot leave its containment cell. That's a little bit of, up to this point, you've been pretty good with your clinical tone, but that's, that's a lapse right there. But the nature of its effects mean it cannot leave its containment cell. I think you'd be saying something like, but its anomalous nature prevent it from doing so yeah that'd be easy anyway scp xxxx is a humanoid entity approximately 100 centimeter 160 centimeters tall at 41 kilograms lacking a head appearing to have it severed due to its neck having exposed flesh and bone and the manifestation of one of its anomalous effects from this point just to be sh clear here that was one sentence. SCP-XXX, this is, this is, this is getting, it's turning into a habit. We'll see if it happens again. SCP-XXXX is a humanoid entity approximately 160 centimeters tall and 41 kilograms, comma, lacking a head, comma, appearing to have its... <laughs> oh, man. Why that's one sentence? I'll never know, but also flesh and bone okay so if you haven't described why you're using air quotes for i'm using air quotes but it's actually actual quotation marks i assume that this means that the flesh and bone are not actually flesh and bone but that means you need to describe what it is you don't need to say flesh and bone and then oh god just say what it is when the surface layer of the entity is removed it projects flames out from it. This is most noticeable from the, oh no, this is a habit because this is one sentence too. This is most noticeable from the fact that it has a large inextinguishable flame projecting from its neck. So, you haven't really described its physical characteristics properly yet. That's, that's a start. Wow. 
These flames do not radiate heat. They do radiate very little light. They do radiate very little light. Wouldn't it be these flames do not radiate heat and radiate very little light? And no, okay, it's comma. These flames do not radiate heat, radiate very little light, and manifests it's manifests in the in the actual work and manifests small puffs of smoke periodically with approximately four oh my god stop this fucking idiocy <laughs> these folks are just referred to as manifestations due to the lack of any burning of material oh my god shut up okay so obviously you've learned almost nothing about what this thing actually is because we have quotation marks around flesh and bone we know it's not actual flesh and bone for the way you're describing it oh my god you're just so wrapped up in its anomalousness that you don't even think about the uh, basic description of what it is lacking a head appearing to have it severed due to its neck <sighs> And that's repeated information. And the manifestation of one of its anomalous effects from this point. I think what you're saying is that its neck, its open neck, is manifesting an anomalous effect. But you don't need to say that. Also, when the surface layer of the entity is removed, what is the surface layer made of? Yeah, obviously it's not actual skin, because you put quotation marks around flesh, and you say when the surface layer of the entity is removed, so surface layer means it's definitely not skin. It projects flames out from it, out from it projects flames out from it <sighs> god damn it the fuck i'm just gonna move on this whole this whole thing is fucked testing scp xxx's tissue have shown all of it to be made of candle wax that finally and bones to be made out of cotton and other similar substances similar substances to cotton name some Despite these materials being relatively usually weak compared to human flesh and bone. Usually weak. You're telegraphing what you're trying to say. Despite these materials being relatively usually weak. And that means this is unusual. Fucking mother, goddamn motherfuckers. Despite the lack of any eyes, ears, mouth, or... Despite the lack of any eyes, ears, mouth, nose, or a working nervous system, SCP-XXX is shown to have all five senses and speaks with no apparent issue despite its lack of a head or vocal cords. I read slightly ahead and I am disappointed. The entity has a relaxed and cheery attitude and a tendency towards calling Foundation staff bro, dude, and my guy, regardless of gender. Often trying to talk about his ideas for fantasy stories, characters, or its desire to be used in experiments, requests for use, or participation in experiments have all been denied. So, now I get into the root of the problem. You have created a character with some anomalies, and you are using it as a, what's the word, stand-in for you. Often trying to, I mean, I, look. Write to your own experiences, definitely. Try to create characters that speak to you as a person, but god damn, don't just copy yourself into an article and don't make it so fucking obvious on your first article. This is somebody's first article and they're just like, I'm gonna put my filth in. SCP XXX causes Alagata incidents seemingly unwillingly. This incident, this incident, you mean these incidents? A this incident occurs. No, you mean these incidents occur when the flames currently being projected from SCP XXX grow greatly and the entity itself falls unconscious. The entity itself, as opposed to the entity elsewise? The flames will then act as an interdimensional <laughs> portal to the. Somebody's a fan of an SCP. You know, it's an interesting uh, timing for this large <laughs> critique, considering what's going on with Meta, the writer of Alagata right now. Uh, <laughs> The flames will then act as an interdimensional portal to the city of Alagata. This is a highly dangerous, this is highly dangerous as incredibly powerful reality benders have been shown to exit from these portals, all of which have worn various masquerades and similarly masquerades and similarly designed masks. These reality benders often have vague, you just, just, you're just redo, you're, you're just redoing Alagata in like one and a half paragraphs. 
These aliens are often vaguely humanoid forms and seem to manifest their abilities in consistent ways. These tend to manifest as sentient nooses, headless attackers, and thorned whips, and the sudden appearance of masks on all those present for the incident, including SCP XXXX, often manifesting on its chest. SCP X, I'm fucking, I'm almost fucking done with this already. SCP XXXX was found to be wandering from the city. Ugh. SCP-XXX was found to be wandering around the Tower of London. Interviews with SCP-XXXX have had it claimed to have been planned to be expelled from the city of Alagata and became unconscious. Wow. That's a sentence. Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't finished. That was a comma, not a period. Later awakening outside of SCP 2264 A. Strangely, despite Foundation agents being present during the time frame SCP XXXX claimed to have first been conscious in our dimension, he wasn't discovered until approximately four days later by bystanders within the tower. One of the agents guarding SCP 2264 A heard the commotion and took the entity into custody. Commotion, that's a great and clinical word. Fucking moron then applying Class A amnestics to those present at time of recovery. Oh, fuck, we're in an interview now. Interview log scp xxxx 6 I mean, that's nice. Interview, I mean, well, the, the idea is that when you add a number like dash 6 to the end of it, it means like, hey, this is the in sixth interview this person's had, which is interesting. <sighs> anyway, interviewer Dr. J. Woodall. Interviewee, SCP-XXXX. Yo, sup, Doc? SCP-XXXX, we have a few questions to ask you. Uh, uh, yeah, sure, I was thinking as much. Forgot to capitalize I. Well, to begin, why were you banished? Do you why you were banished? Yep, that's the sentence. Well, to begin, do you why you were banished from Alagata? You've mentioned this in previous interviews, but you've never given us the reason. How should I know? I'm just walking around the city, then some funky dudes come up to me. Tell me tell me that it's decided I gotta be expelled. Next thing I know, I'm laying on the floor in front of some big in, big in metal door that I can't open. So I go looking around, and after ages, I find these guys without masks on. Super weird where I'm from. I try asking, hey, where am I? But these guy, girls just keep screaming and screaming. I don't know why. Then, yes, yes, we know all that. Then why did you let him go on for like three, for like a paragraph, if you already know all that? All you had to do was say no. SCP. Uh, you forgot to, you forgot to hit enter. <laughs> SCP XXXX. Damn bro, chill. Let's just get on with this. Jeez. But you, never mind. Next is what you did when you lived in Alagata, but... Man, that, is an, that feels like an awkward phrasing in my head, but maybe I'm just getting so used to this guy's writing that I'm like fucking up in my head. Just what I thought everybody else was doing, strolling around and chatting it up with some rather classy gals. Nothing else. I mean, those ambassador fellas came and grabbed me once in a while, but after they got a hold of me, I guess I feel asleep. Feel asleep. Because I don't remember anything except waking up in the middle of the streets all cut up in junk. I guess maybe I had a job with them. They came and got me pretty often. God damn it. Stop trying to write your own self into an article. Fucking just stop it. Stop it. I'm just I'm disappointed is what I am. So, all right. First of all, break your sentences down. I think a good tool for you would probably be the Hemingway editor. Uh, it's a online tool you can use to help detect at the very least your complex, your overly complex sentences. I actually use it a little bit myself from time to time. It's not an absolute. You don't have to simplify everything down, but it does help you at least find them easily in the work. It's better than just looking and reading and reading again. Second of all, stop using quotation marks for shit. But flesh, bone, tissue, bro, dude, my guy. <laughs> I don't need to know that this guy... You, you, <laughs> 
you give me an interview, okay? And the guy has a weird manner of speaking. I think that actually can work, especially considering the content you're talking about here. I don't, I don't think this article could work in most iterations, but considering we're talking about Alagada, the first thing people jump to when they think of Alagada is not a surfer dude voice. So there's that, that you got that going for you, but you telegraph it. You don't have to talk. About, the entity has a relaxed and cheery attitude and a tendency towards calling foundation staff, blah, 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 blah. Or, and then the, and then the other half of that sentence, like, which again, your sentence is overly complex, often trying to talk about its ideas for fantasy stories, characters, or its desire to be used in experiments, which screams that you, you're writing yourself or you're putting way, way, way too much of your own self into this character. Putting some of yourself into a character is fine. Putting all of yourself into a character is a terrible idea. Mainly because you're going to run into people like me who's going to rip it apart. You need to get early on to describing what this guy looks like and what he is made of and all that other stuff. You can't just... There's too much... <laughs> there's too much dancing around the reality of what it is. So yeah. Simplify your sentences. Be careful about your clinical tone. And if you have problems with understanding clinical tone, read more fucking modern articles. That's all you got to do. And obviously, I'm looking at this. You've read modern articles. You're doing a pretty good job of making this more like a series five than a series one, which is good because the people who are voting right now are used to the series five style. There's also a ton of needless information here. What does him being made of what cotton and candle wax do for your story? What, what, is, what do you achieve with that? What does it give you? And also, how do they know he's made of candle wax and cotton unless they take stuff from him? At which point, like, does that material stay that's as strong as it is or does it revert to normal candle wax and cotton? Simplify, my dude, simplify. Take your story, and try and reduce the word count considerably. Take your sentences and try and simplify them down to their bare bones. Make them into two or three sentences instead of one long sentence with a comma, then another comma, then another comma, and then another comma. You got some promise here. I don't know if this article is going to work for you, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Also, I remember saying this earlier, and I just saw the word noose. Why is there a noose hung from the ceiling in the center of the room for the comfort of the entity? You don't explain why that comforts the entity at no point. Anyway, that's it. I think I'm... <sighs> Could have been worse, I guess. Could have been worse. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please scroll down and hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. Then head on over to patreon.com slash decimarian like everybody here on the screen already has and pledge at any level it's nice to know that i'm not alone out here because goddamn sometimes i need that but i'll see you again on tuesday